What do you do when you're a citizen of a county but also live on the Navajo Nation and the roads that access your home aren't being maintained? Today on the county seat, we will address that very issue with representatives from San Juan County as we ride along a bus route on dirt roads in the Navajo Nation. County officials are stuck in the middle of bureaucratic red tape and the school buses are just stuck. Stay tuned. County Seat is next. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Today, we're at the Utah State Capitol for our County Seat episode. We are going to talk about a situation that people in most communities in the state take for granted. Mom runs Johnny and Jill down to the school bus stop, puts them on the bus and sends them off to school and mom doesn't worry. However, if you live in the portion of San Juan County that's part of the Navajo Nation on the reservation, your trip to school in the school bus can be treacherous. Let's find out a little bit about this uh, from a report from Derek Dowsett. The San Juan County Road Department maintains 1,610 miles of dirt roads, 745 miles of gravel, and 371 miles of paved roads in the county. Kenneth Maryboy, a San Juan County Commissioner and Chapter President of the Mexican Water Chapter on the Navajo Nation, is out today driving a bus route to take inventory of its condition. It's just, things are deteriorating. They can't keep up with because the Navajo Nation is so big and they're underfunded. It's getting bad enough to where the roads are getting, starting to fall apart. This road is no longer part of the San Juan County inventory of B roads, nor is it maintained by the county. While the county had historically claimed and maintained the roads on the Navajo Nation under an assumed right-of-way, that all changed in the summer of 2018. The Navajo Division of Transportation, NDOT, informed the county that all routes on the Navajo Nation without valid right-of-way documentation between the tribe and the county would be changed to tribal ownership. San Juan County honored the sovereignty of the Navajo Nation and submitted a new inventory of B roads to UDOT, which ended any funding from the state of Utah to maintain those roads. Since that time, many of these roads have seen little to no maintenance due to a lack of resources available to NDOT. We are on one of the bus routes that um, is being utilized by at least about three bus every day. We, we, we came off of Highway 191 and uh, just kind of give you an idea how bad the road conditions are. And at this point in time, this is pretty bad. We're, um, we're, we're starting to have kids missing more school. The parents are complaining when the kids come home, sometimes they cry because of the rough riding on the bus. They got headaches and they're not feeling good and they're so fatigued by the time they get back to the house to do their homework. So they have to either lay down or take a rest before they even start doing anything around the house. And that's one of the biggest worries from the family side. For the citizens of the county who live on the Navajo Nation and drive these roads every day, a solution can't come soon enough. The county commission has been frustrated because their hands are tied until the Bureau of Indian Affairs, NDOT, and the Navajo Nation can agree upon the inventory of the roads to be maintained by the county. The process has just been slow. If it was all up to me, I said, to hell with it. Let's get a grader out there and stop moving that dirt. But uh, we still have to uh, abide by what the federal code states as a sovereign nation with the Navajo Nation. While frustration mounts, the likeliness of a solution between the county and the Navajo Nation is on the horizon. But until then, there are nearly 100 miles of school bus routes that are in need of immediate attention, so kids can go to school safe and on time. For the county seat, I'm Derek Dowsett. 
We will be back to talk about how we get from where we are right now and the condition of the roads to how we get to a place where the kids in San Juan County can enjoy their school life like everybody else. We'll be back on the county seat in just a minute. Welcome back to the county seat, our show coming to you from the state capitol during the legislative session. Joining us for our conversation about the road issue in San Juan County is uh, Commissioner Bruce Adams from the San Juan County Commissioner, Commissioner Willie Gray Eyes, also from the San Juan County Commission, and the County Administrator, Mac McDonald. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, in the story, Commissioner Mary Boy said, sometimes I feel like I just want to get out here with the blades and fix the roads but it's not an it's it's not really a doable situation and what happened specifically to the funding the county used to get to maintain the roads when the ownership of the roads changed well i think well, maybe i think maybe uh commissioner mary boy has the same frustration that commissioner gray eyes and and i do and and the people in san juan county we have road equipment we have a history of maintaining those bus routes. We have um, been getting money from the state, uh, being a B, B road fund mm -hmm. to maintain those roads. And because the Navajo Nation uh, decided that they wanted to take over the, the maintenance of those roads, we're, uh, we're out of the picture. I think historically we need to look and go back to uh, the uh, agreement mm -hmm. such as the Treaty of 1868 that, and also the trust responsibility of the federal government to the people, the Navajo people, the reservations all over the country. Those are contract agreements that were made mm -hmm. and it's not being upheld to the fullest extent it's supposed to be. And the other thing that I ran into is the uh, jurisdiction, the sovereignty of the Navajo Nation, the sovereignty of the, the county and the state of Utah and the federal. So those are some of the barriers that I encounter in the process of uh, making agreements. So we have to come down to certain agreement, the use and how to put a blade on the road. Who's going to be responsible? Who's going to be paying for it? Yeah. Those are some of the main substance that we, uh, if there wasn't any jurisdiction or uh, some of the issue. There was a very similar situation um, with uh, your neighbor, Kane County, at one point, with some sections of road that the Bureau of Land Management had claimed title to. And the county felt for a while, under legal advice, that they could not continue to maintain it because uh, they did not have jurisdiction and therefore they didn't have the authority to mess with the right-of-way. Yeah. So, so the jurisdiction does yeah. become a very important part of the right. issue. In the process, the, uh, the contract that we have with the federal government since 1975, I believe, was uh, when it was determined that uh, at the federal government by legislation and the acting uh, Indian Soft Determination Education Act, mm -hmm. 1975. That, within those parameters, there was a, a term called contracting, 638, public law 93-638. That, in terms, gave the federal government the right to extend uh, soft determination if the Indian people or the Navajo, in this case, Navajo Nation, say, we'll, we'll take over. We can't go ahead and do that. That's what happened. And 
at the same time, the federal uh, funds are drying up. Oh, the only eighty million dollars a year to the B Bureau of Indian Affairs for the whole country. So no, part of so. the pro so part of the problem that that you say Navajo Nation is having is that they don't have the funds to maintain the roads, and the conundrum is that San Juan County doesn't really have the opportunity to. Uh, you can't really do it because. If they're not Utah roads, then the Utah B and C fund is not going to be able to pay for. Is, is, does that kind of sum it up? Well, I think uh, I think you know we're we're kind of getting away from the the real problem, and that is getting kids to school in a safe manner. Mm -hmm. Now, all these roads are dirt roads; they can't uh, be improved to a gravel level. The county's relationship with the federal government is we are a subdivision of the state. Mm -hmm. So we work with the state transportation department to get B road funds. Uh, the state of Utah has a relationship with the federal government. The Navajo Nation has a relationship with the federal government. They don't really have a, a relationship with the state of Utah like the county does. So as Willie was explaining, there's, there's a difficult problem existing on the reservation because the reservation is uh, loyal to the uh, Navajo Nation, mm -hmm. and but they are still part of the county. So we have to get contracts in place uh, if the county is going to maintain any of those school routes as we've done in the past. So part of the, I, I guess part of the question, I was kind of headed there, um, is is Window Rock and the Navajo Nation just not dealing with this issue uh, out of the fact that they their money's dried up, or is it the fact that the number of the portion of the Navajo Nation? I think there are only what seven thousand members of the tribe in Utah and one hundred and fifty thousand outside in the surrounding states. It, does any of it seem to you that it might possibly be that you're like a stepchild of being in oh, one of the correction. Utah chapters? Uh, I believe it's uh, 8,000. Yeah, I'm only... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. 150,000 Navajos on the Navajo Nation. 150,000 off the reservation. So there's 300 plus thousand in total Navajo Nation population that you that that's the uh, I, I guess the point that I'm making is is there any concern that yeah. you're they're just not a big enough part of the Navajo Nation that that that's getting the attention that it, it is warranted well the 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 problem is that back in 1975 the federal government put a pot of money mm-hmm and said, this will be 638, whoever tribes want to contract these monies for delivering service, they can do it. So this part of money, the federal government has never replenished. The water of this money has gone down, 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 down. And 638 is a way for the federal government to get out of the Indian business. Hmm. That is the key understanding that we should be dealing with. Instead of having to push the federal government to deliver full trust responsibility. Okay. To the intonation. And this becomes a good spot to take a break. We'll be right back with the county seat. We'll start looking at solutions on where we can head with this when we come back on the county seat. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back to the county seat at the Utah State Capitol. We are talking today about um, 
the Navajo Nation, the part of it that sits in San Juan County, and the issue of school kids being able to get to school safely because of the condition of the roads. As we mentioned earlier, uh, the county used to maintain the roads and claimed ownership of them. The ownership was then claimed by the Navajo Nation, and the funding that helped the county that came from the state is no longer available. And, and so the roads are in a deteriorating state, and it's a challenge for the kids to get to school safely. How many miles of road are we actually talking about? Oh, I wouldn't even know the total miles. So what we're doing, what we're working with the Navajo Nation right now is, is to get a list of those priority on roads. And so once we've established that, and, and we're looking, our first priority obviously, as Commissioner Adams had mentioned, is those school bus routes. Mm -hmm. So they're going through and making sure that it is an actual school bus route that qualifies uh, with multiple houses on that road. Um, once we have that list, then we'll be able to determine the mileage on it. Where these are roads that exist within the state of Utah, um, then we will reapply for the Class B road funds uh, with that appropriate miles once they, once they designate those roads. They always had the right of way. It's owned by the Navajo Nation, the mm -hmm. Bureau of Indian Affairs, um, and then the Navajo Department of Transportation. Um, they exist within San Juan County. Mm -hmm. uh, so within the state of Utah. Um, and they've allowed us that right of way. Well, it was the right of way that they took back. Say, well, you no longer have a right of way to maintain these roads. And a lot of it on behalf of the Navajo Nation was uh, they're, they're striving to become a sovereign nation. They want to be sovereign. Um, but it, it boiled down to capacity, um, kind of like Commissioner uh, Gray Eyes had mentioned is funding, you know, and we hear this across the board, even in the state of Utah, there's funding issues. You're trying to deal with limited resources, uh, capacity. Uh, they didn't have the capacity when they took over the right of ways back from us and, and kind of essentially kicked San Juan County off of the maintenance. They didn't have the employees, they didn't have the equipment to come back in and maintain it. Meanwhile, the citizens of Utah that exist there on the Navajo Nation are are screaming. They're like, hey, our kids, they're, they're falling out of their seats on their buses just going to school, or it takes so long, or they're getting stuck in the wintertime. Um, I mean, it is a conundrum that Johnny comes home with a black eye, and it absolutely. wasn't from a fight on the school ground, it, it was, was from the bus. The school bus itself, yes, and so yeah. it's the capacity to take care of it, and the county had the capacity, you know, we had the staff, we had the equipment, uh, but once, once they kicked us off of the, the right-of-ways, it was um, trying to work with them to get those right of ways back so we can get back on there. Uh, uh, we're working on agreements with the Navajo Nation to to maintain those those bus routes again and and with uh, some cooperation from the Navajo Nation the county has the ability to uh, to to get B and C road funds for that again and maintain those roads get those kids to school and back some of those kids ride an hour one way to get to school and then they've got to get on that bus and ride home and get home in time to help fix supper, gather wood, uh, do all of those things before they can even think about um, doing any homework. So it's a big challenge for these kids to, to go to school in San Juan County that live on the reservation. So what is the essence of the agreement? Uh, Commissioner Gray, as you have just, just before our taping had come back from Window Rock, uh, What's in place and what's the timeline and, and what will the solution look like? I think uh, as of yesterday we were talking and Mr. Mack was over at this meeting in Wonder with me and also Commissioner Mayerboy in terms uh, we did uh, tap on the, the matter in terms of how, when, uh, the sign of the uh, intergovernmental agreement will be, which uh, according to uh, a direction given by the president, uh, Navajo Nation President Nez, uh, he set the date and said, let's do 24th of February mm -hmm. as T-Sans bus. So 
everybody is targeting on that and, and also to... So how will that process work? Will a right-of-way, will the Navajo Nation still own the roads, but in these school bus routes, they will reestablish a right-of-way so that the county can claim for BNC road funds? Is that right. the way this is going to work? Right. So those will be uh, in the agreement. So the county will have uh, access to glade, those are maintenance only, I assume, not a construction, but uh, that's right, just, just to keep them. Yes. The interlocal agreement will, will create the authority for the county mm -hmm. to go in and, and maintain the roads, and it will also create the authority for the county to um, qualify those roads as B roads so they can get B road money from the state of Utah like we did in the past. It, it's a great, a great agreement, great accomplishment for San Juan County, but especially a great accomplishment for families and school children in, in that area. How long has this taken? I mean, I, it started, I guess it started in earnest in what, 2018? So it, has it been a couple been, of years or? Been a year? Well, probably we, we probably year. never had, had yeah. the agreement in the first place, so it might have started back in 1900 or yeah. something like that. <laughs> 1970 with the the main agreement. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's been a it, long time. It has been a long time. A year since we were officially kicked off from maintaining those around there. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you for helping us understand this issue today. Uh, share this with your friends, folks at home. This is This is really important information. And it does serve to show that if you do roll up your sleeves and get together, there are all kinds of things that can be done uh, between all different levels of government. Uh, it just takes an innovative and dedicated uh, tack to get it accomplished. Uh, look for an update on this issue uh, on our website, on our social media. As we hear things from San Juan County, we'll let you know. And uh, thanks for watching The County Seat. Follow us on our social media comment. We'd like to hear your comments and concerns, and we'll see you next week on the county seat.